Hello and welcome to Totbot. Today we'll discuss about the IDs used for writing code in Python. Python has become a very popular language nowadays, particularly for the data scientists and the machine learning engineers. So let's get started. So there are two kinds of IDs available in the market. First one is the desktop based and the second one is the browser based. So let's start with the desktop based IDs first. Okay, so these are the few desktop based IDs available in the market. First one is the PyCharm. This is available both in the paid and the free version. PyCharm is basically from the JetBrains, which all we have used for that IntelliJ idea. This is from the same uh, JetBrains company. Second one is that uh, Eclipse PyDev. This is an open source ID. Third one is the uh, Visual Studio. Visual Studio comes both in free and paid version. Next one is the Visual Studio Code. This is free. Next one is Spider. This is open source and comes with Anaconda installed. So now what is Anaconda? We'll come to that in a bit. So next uh, one is the Atom. This is also open source. So these are uh, pretty good ideas for writing code in Python, but you need to install these guys in your machine and uh, these IDs requires your resources, uses resources from your machine. Like you need to have a very good memory and the CPU. Next set of the IDs are browser based IDs. And at this point in time, we have uh, three options. First one is the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, this is an open source web application that allows you to create and share documents that contain live code, equations, visualization, and narrative text. So Jupyter Notebook comes in an integrated with Anaconda. Here you can see this is that uh, Anaconda site anaconda.com and distribution this anaconda distribution is the python and r data science platform and from here you can download that anaconda once you download and install anaconda in your machine you have jupyter notebook integrated in that anaconda so let's get back to the list uh, second one is the google Collab. Google Colab is a free Jupyter notebook environment that requires no setup and runs entirely in the cloud. So this is a kind of a thing which is built on the top of Jupyter notebook and this also runs in the browser. And the third one is the Kaggle kernel. This is a free, free platform to run Jupyter notebooks in the browser. The processing power for the notebooks comes from the server in the cloud and not your local machine. This is a very, very important um, information because if you are writing a machine learning a code um, and obviously you need a very, very powerful machine because you need to train your model where you need to have a huge data and sometimes it take uh, hours and days to train your model. So you need a very, very powerful machine to work in, a, in that kind of a data set. So this Kaggle and Google Colab provides you that kind of a powerful machine that you can use. So um, these are the benefit, at least to me, writing a code in Python in the browser based ID. And we will take a look the browser based IDE for today. Just open up a Jupyter Notebook in Anaconda and then Google Colab and uh, Kaggle Kernel one by one. So for today's discussion, we are leaving the desktop IDs um, on your own to explore. But today we will see just three browser based IDs. So let's first uh, go with Jupyter Notebook. I have installed Anaconda in my uh, machine. So uh, once you install Anaconda in your machine, you will have an Anaconda prompt. I'm using a Windows machine. Obviously, you can also have, um, if you are using Mac, then you can go to that Anaconda prompt and then it will show, it will show you this. 
So I have also created another environment TensorFlow. Uh, and so let's switch to the TensorFlow environment. How to create an environment in Terraconda? I am not going into that today because that is the out of scope for today's course. So uh, let's go to the uh, TensorFlow environment. How to do that? We need to activate AAC. And then we are into the TensorFlow um, environment. Let's open the Jupyter Notebook from here. So you can type Jupyter Notebook and hit enter. So it will start up a Jupyter Notebook for you and it opens up a notebook in the browser. So you see this is a running in local host. The port is 8888. So this is my uh, Jupyter Notebook. Now if I want to open uh, editor, click on this known new button here and it is uh, given me this kind of an options so i have three environments set up so for example i want to open that notebook in the tensorflow environment so let me click on the tensorflow environment and this is the editor for you these are the cells and you can uh, add a cell you can say move up that cell you can move down that cell you can run your code and all that so for example let's type a few things so import tensorflow and then let's print version so if you notice this is in green that means this is in the edit uh, mode so if i hit escape it turns blue that means it's in we can uh, we can run this code so if we hit run you see the star the start me star means the code is using so there is an error it needs to be as as tf and then again let's hit run and it is printing the version for me so this is the way you can use jupyter notebook in that anaconda environment so let's uh, move to the another one the google collab and then after that we'll go to the kaggle kernel so this is that google collab uh, home page if you see collabresearch.google.com notebooks and welcome ipynb so if you go to file and click new python 3 notebook it will open a notebook for you this is entirely in the browser based and runs your code in the cloud so first you need to install tensorflow here for that command is that pip install tensorflow and then if you hit this icon here it will install the tensorflow for you and then if you want to write a code you need to click on that and this cell is here you can write your code here so import tensorflow as tf and then let's print version okay so the tensorflow version is 1.13.0 rc1 so this is the version um, 
of Google Colab we are using here. So you can use this Jupyter Notebook also. Let's move on to the third one, which is available as a Kaggle kernel. Let me open this Kaggle.com. Since I am already logged in, it directly lands me to my uh, page. If you did not uh, register with Kaggle, you first need to register with Kaggle. And once you log in, you will be presented with the screen. And then if you see this kernel, if you click on this kernel, it will take, it to take you to this page. And then um, once you hit new kernel, it will show you this page. And if you choose notebook, it will create and launch a notebook in the browser for you. So this is the notebook um, in Kaggle. So let's do the same thing over here, what we did in that other uh, Anaconda and the Google Collab. I am importing TensorFlow. And printing the version. Same thing, this is a cell. You see, this is the button. Now, if I click on this, this is running, and the version is displayed here, and the version here is 1.12.0. So these are the three options you have if you want to write code in Python and in the browser based IDs. This is my personal favorite because uh, once you are in the Kaggle, you have a lot of data sets to uh, play around and you can add your data set in your um, a notebook and start playing with it. So this is very handy if you are starting Python or R. This will be a very good place to start writing code in Python. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Thanks for watching.